Heart disease puts people at a higher risk of complications from COVID-19, but the virus can also trigger heart problems. A recent review published in the journal JAMA Cardiology by experts at the University of Texas Health Sciences Center at Houston, UT Health, concluded that the COVID-19 virus, much like other respiratory viruses, can impact a patient's cardiac system. The study found that even healthy people who contract COVID-19 are at risk of heart injury. Joining us live in the studio to discuss issues around this is Dr. Eugene Wosu, the CMD, United Heart Hospital, and also a cardiologist. Thank you, doctor, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, interestingly, for most of the cases we've recorded of people who died from COVID-19, there are always complications from COVID-19. What are these likely complications that people are dying from? in respect to COVID-19? Well, the two most deadly complications of um, COVID-19 is acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is intense inflammation of the lungs, resulting in poor oxygenation and lung failure, and of course, um, heart conditions. The relationship and link between COVID-19 and heart disease is a double-edged sword. People with pre-existing heart condition have been found to have more complications and death from COVID-19. And also COVID-19 by itself can trigger new heart disease and heart attack in people with no previous history of heart disease. As a matter of fact, the report from the National Health Commission in China on the recent um, pandemic at you know, Wuhan City show that 35% of people that died from COVID-19 infection had high blood pressure, and 17% had pre-existing heart disease. So I can tell you that high blood pressure and heart disease puts you at risk, but we have now identified several risk groups, and this is important because you need to know if you belong to this risk group so that you can follow the guidelines and do everything possible to avoid getting the infection. Okay. So number one is immunosuppressed people. If you have kidney transplant, liver transplant, or heart transplant, you are at a significant risk of complication if you contract this virus. If you have cancer, especially if you are undergoing chemotherapy or radiation therapy, you are at high risk. People with chronic end-stage kidney disease receiving hemodialysis or any form of dialysis at high risk. If you have long-standing poorly controlled diabetes, you are also at high risk because you can you know, fight infections you know, very well. Yes. Now, the next group is elderly and frail patients. If you are 70 years of age or higher with any form of heart disease, you are at particular risk. If you have these heart conditions, um, previous heart attack, if you have heart failure or cardiomyopathy where you have very weak heart muscle, or if you have significant valvular heart disease, and if you have some cardiac arrhythmia, irregular heart disease, that puts you at a high risk. Also, if you have angina, that limits your daily living. Angina, if you have coronary artery disease and you have chest pain with any form of activity that limits your daily life, you have at you know, high risk. If you have underlying lung disease or chronic kidney disease with any form of heart disease like high blood pressure, you have a higher risk. And finally, pregnant women with any form of heart disease. But let me also say this. There are some people that say they are normal, but they are out of shape. You climb one flight of stairs, you are panting for, for bread. Or you walk a short distance, 50 feet, you have to stop to rest. You are at risk because infection and inflammation and fever will put stress on your heart and you cannot survive. So simple stress test, climbing, you failed it. If you have that, you also have to be careful. Now, the list seems like a very extensive list with those in a group of of contracting, um, dying from um, complications of, of this virus. Now, at the emergence of this virus, they did say that the younger ones were, were immune to this, but we've seen in recent time, the, the babies even contracting the, the virus. And so, I mean, what, what, what changed in, in the process of this? Because it's not just the elderly now, they did say it was the elderly who were prone to it. Nobody is immune to this. Anybody can catch the virus. But what they're saying is that if you're in good health, and you are young, 
you are actually likely to survive it and not have the severe disease. And you could be 70 and, and in good health and not also Absolutely. Of course, there are some 100 years, you know, people that survived it. Okay. But since we are talking about heart disease and COVID, yes. the other thing I need to quickly tell people, what are the different types of heart disease that people end up having with this, you know, COVID-19 infection? And how they can identify it if there are signs, symptoms to look out for. Okay. Yeah. All right. The, the, the first one is um, acute coronary syndrome or myocardial infarction, heart attack. This results from rupture of, you know, plaque. Plaque is cholesterol and fatty buildup inside the blood vessels that supply blood to the heart. COVID-19 infections we have been found to have a plaque rupture, okay? Now, how do you, um, you know, identify the symptom-wise? When you are having a heart attack, it might be too late because the first sign might be cardiac arrest dropping dead, okay? But no, no, prior, no prior symptom. Absolutely. You can just be fine, no chest pain, nothing, and then you have a plaque rupture, you drop that. This happens all the time. Okay, so, so that's a different topic, okay. you know, some other time. Yes. Now, the next, you know, heart problem is heart failure. COVID-19 infection can cause heart failure through several mechanisms. One is the heart muscle gets very weak and then it cannot function to, you know, meet the demands of the body. And also when you have an infection and fever, you have tachycardia, which is increased rapid heartbeat. Increased rapid heartbeat can trigger heart failure in even normal people. So that's one mechanism. The next you know, type of heart disease is what we call myocarditis. It is intense inflammation and damage to the heart muscle by the virus itself. It makes the heart very, very weak and can lead to cardiac death from arrhythmias and also heart failure. And finally, um, people with COVID-19 infection can actually have arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation. fibrillation, you know, very rapid heartbeat, or they can have deadly, you know, uh, cardiac arrhythmias that result in um, heart attack. Now, another very deadly complication is shock. This is from intense, very low blood pressure. The infection can actually make you go into shock where your blood pressure becomes very low and then you cannot supply blood and nutrients to organs and you die from that. Doctor, so, let, so these are the mechanisms okay. of you know, heart disease from COVID-19 infection. Let, let's talk about transmission, how this is transmitted. Okay, very good. Um, transmission is by two means. One is virus droplets from infected patients that are coughing, sneezing or talking. Then the second one is contaminated you know, surfaces. Like the virus can survive on desktop, you know, a steering wheel of cars, you know, light switches, you know, door handles, because they can survive for hours and days. So if you get contaminated from those two, you can have it. Now, we don't know everything yet about this virus, but it's not been confirmed to be airborne, okay? But who knows, you know, as we know more about it, that could change. But right now, it is not an airborne transmission. So having known the mode of transmission, what is key to every one of us in this age? How to avoid it and how prevent How to avoid it, yeah, the recommendation. Yes. So number one is stay away from people that are sick, coughing, sneezing, temperature, sore throats, try to stay away. Number two is social distancing. The recommendation is, if possible, give two meters away from people whenever possible, okay? The next one is, when you are coughing or sneezing, cough or sneeze into a tissue or into the inner part of your elbow, okay? And the next one is, avoid touching your face, mouth, and nose with your hands. And then you have to wash your hands thoroughly, at least 20 seconds. Okay, regularly. And then the next one is the surfaces, you know, all those surfaces that could be contaminated, clean them with disinfectant on a regular basis. Okay, and then, very important, stay away. Limit unnecessary travels, okay? So, and when you 
go out for things that are essential, foods, you know, um, buying medications, going out to exercise. And COVID-19 is here to stay for a long time. So we are currently in a lockdown. So in two weeks, the lockdown is lifted or so. Does it mean that COVID-19 is disappeared? Do you think, Absolutely you think after no. these two weeks that the lockdown will be lifted? I'm, I'm saying if it does, okay. at some point yeah. it has to. Even, whether it's six weeks or well, know, What two are your weeks. recommendations? What so, would you recommend? So what I'm trying to say is that we have to brace for the new normal. The new normal is because this infection is going to spread in the community until we have you know, vaccine or medications that you know, can treat it easily. Okay, so if the lockdown is lifted, are you going to now go to a wedding reception that is crowded you know, in this environment? Are you going to go to restaurants that are crowded? Are you gonna go to movie theaters that are just crowded? So this is a new normal, and we have to adjust to that. All right. Dr. Eugene also thank you very much for joining us on News and R and for your enlightening contribution on the news. Thank you very much for having me.